Hey everyone, Marnix here. In today's video, I want to go over some game dev related tools. However, I know that we're all broke boys out here in the indie game development world. So just for you, I've compiled a list of basically all the software you need to get started with game development. So not just your engine, but also all the accompanying things you may need for models, sound, audio, things like that. And I'll be going over that with you guys in this video. So stick around. So one last thing that I want to mention is in this list, I've left out most of the limited free tools. So for example, there's a bunch of tools where there is a free tier, but there's also a paid tier and you lose some functionality by going to the free tier. I'm really looking at something that is 100% free for basically all of the features. So you don't really have to be limited by, oh, I need to subscribe to the Essentials Plus plan or whatever if I want to save more than two pictures. I personally think that that's really not the greatest thing and I'm not the biggest fan of the as a service economy, but hey, we have to deal with the world we live in. So let's get started. The first part, of course, if you want to make a game is to have an engine. You could make it yourself, it would be free, but that's dumb. We've already discussed it in multiple other videos why you shouldn't have your own engine. So we're going to look at other third-party engines. If we want free and like fully free, then we have only one real good option and that is Godot. So Godot is 100% free. There's no costs to having made your own game. There's no payment you need to do once you reach a certain revenue. So in general, it's a really good point to start with. And also the Godot engine, whilst not as big as Unity and Unreal, is still quite powerful and you can already make some really good indie games just with that engine. Now, what I just said about I only want really free soft, I think the engine part will be the only exception I'm making to that because you can't miss out on Unity and Unreal. Both are free to start with and actually also CryEngine, but I wouldn't recommend that as a starter beginner engine. They are all free to start with. The catch is that once you have your successful game, and in general it's between if you have $100,000 in revenue or $250,000, you have to start paying a percentage-based fee upon your income or a set fee for Unity Plus or Enterprise. And these can be quite costly. However, I think that as we're indie developers, we're probably quite far from that 100K annual income. So this is the one exception where I'll be like, okay, it's free and you can really do a lot with it. So I would just go ahead with those. Now we've got our engine, but we need to write code for our game. And here, once again, we personally at Byte Me Games use um, the JetBrains suite, it's really good, but it's not free. A free IDE that you can use, however, is something like Visual Studio Code. This is basically a very advanced text editor in a certain regard, and you can use it for both Godot script or for Unity, although Unity integration is a bit iffy, or something like Visual Studio Community. This is also free for if you're just making games on your own and you're not really making any money. And also the last exception I really have to the, you'll have to pay at some point if you become really big. Now. We have our engine, we have our IDE, so we can write code, but we need to store our code somewhere. And this one was very tricky to get you a good solution that was completely free. So there will be some struggles with getting this up and running probably, but you need version control. There, there's no way around it. You need some kind of version control. And the problem is if you write just a website or whatever, you can throw it on GitHub, no problem, or GitLab or whatever. But for games, you usually need something called large file support, which basically, as the name says, allows you to use Git for large files. Another alternative is to use something like Perforce, but that has no free tier at all, basically. So I just left that one out. You can work with Git. That's how we do it here at Byte Me Games. But there's no real free Git LFS solution because a lot of files take up a lot of space. And of course, if there's some online provider, they're not going to give you 40 gigabytes or whatever of asset storage for free. The workaround for this is to set up your own GitLab server. You can actually self-host GitLab with large file support. That's how we're doing it. And that way you can have multiple people accessing your code base without really a big issue in terms of merging or losing data and being able to roll back, for example, if an issue isn't going great. Now, ideally you'd run this on some kind of server. That's how we do it. But if you don't have that option, we can also host it on our own computer that we are working on for our game. So with our editor and all of those things installed on. The only downside is if you have multiple people, your computer needs to be on for them to push and pull the latest updates from the GitLab server. 
It's a bit of a setup process because you'll ideally be needing to use something like Docker, which is supported on Windows, Mac, and Linux by now. So there shouldn't be too much issues, but I'll link a post or whatever of how you can install it yourself, some documentation. It takes a bit of time, but it saves you some money. And if we're really going to drill down and to save as much money as possible and start with no budget, this is the way to go for version control. The code part has been dealt with now. What about images? We work with Photoshop and Aspride sometimes, and these are great tools, but once again, we don't have money in our hypothetical world. In which case, if you want something with Photoshop-like capabilities, go with something like Krita. Krita is open source, it's really good, it's really powerful. It's basically the open source version of Photoshop, and you can do a lot of content manipulation with it. If Krita is a bit too advanced and you just wanna to stitch together some things, something like paint.net, is an also a really good solution. Now, when making indie games, pixel art is also a very common style because it's a really easy way to make your own art in a kind of unique style. And ideally, you can do these things in Photoshop or Krita, for example, but ideally you have a pixel art specific editor that has support for sprite sheets and stuff like that. And there are some solutions here as well that are really good and that are free. One of them is Piskel, which is a web-based uh, pixel art editor, which is really good. It's completely free. And then the second one is Pixie Editor. This is quite a new program, but it's actually from as far as I've been playing around with it. It's also quite powerful. You can download and install it on your local machine. And it's just in general, quite good to make some pixel art with as well. Then we get to sound. Maybe you'll want to make some music or you want to make sound effects. If you want to make sound effects, there's only one solution for that really. We use it on our own as well, and that is Audacity. There's just nothing really better that I have found yet for combining sound effects, applying filters, merging them together, exporting it, editing it all together. It's really good. It's really easy to use in my opinion. The UI is maybe a bit outdated sometimes, but it does the job and it does it really well. Now, music, that's a bit of a different story. On Windows, if you want to make like actual full soundtracks, there isn't really anything. If you have a Mac, you can use something like GarageBand, but even that is a bit meh. However, similar to how pixel art is very popular with indie developers, a good 8-bit soundtrack can also do wonders for your game. And luckily, we do have some really good 8-bit sound editors to really make music quite easily. And this one, I'm gonna butcher the name so hard, is um, something called Bosca Seolu. I have no clue. Bosca Kyol. Bosca Coil. I don't know. They didn't pick the best name, but it's a really good music editor. It's actually been made for use in, for example, game jams to really easily and quickly make some pretty decent soundtracks for your game. So we have the holy trinity, code, sound, and visuals. Now we get to the boring stuff, management. How are we going to store all our notes? Because our brains, whilst pretty big, aren't big enough to store your entire game and all of the mechanics with, and other people can't just go and look into your brain if they need some documentation. If you look at documentation, the first tool that I would recommend is Obsidian. This is actually a relatively niche, I guess, I don't know. It's a markdown-based storage system. They call it the second brain, where you can really link items together and build these very expanded maps. It's a really good note-taking solution and you can go really deep with it, store a lot of data. And that's what I would recommend. If you want to work some collaborative documentation, what we also used in the past is OneNote. And that was also quite okay, although it really lacks a lot of linking functionality and a really good overview of how we can merge parts together. So it wasn't ideal, but for our first version of the mechanics, we could document them in there quite easily. And then lastly, if you need to make spreadsheets or whatever, just go with Google Docs. It's really powerful. It's not as powerful as an Excel, but you probably won't need that in-depth of calculations done to, in your spreadsheets. Or if you need to draft up some Word documents, stuff like that, some presentations, the Google Suite is free to use if you have a Gmail account and is really powerful as well. And now, before I end this video, I have two more that I couldn't really fit in anywhere, but I feel like they can still be really good tools to just have or resources, basically. The first one is, you'll probably need a trailer, you'll probably need to edit videos, maybe you're even making content similar to us about your game dev journey, in which case you will need a video editor. We use Premiere Pro, once again, it's Adobe, it's not free, but DaVinci Resolve I have also worked with, it's a really powerful video editor. You can do a lot with it. And it's really all you need to make some really good videos. I mean, even movies can be edited in it and have been edited in it. Yet it's also quite easy to get started with as well. 
And then lastly, this is kind of an off one, but you can actually, if you're looking into code, there's the book Game Programming Patterns, and you could either buy the physical book or whatever, or you can actually access the full thing online. And I've been going through that one recently, and it's really interesting. I guess it could tie into the code aspect to know how should I program my game, and it's completely free to read, and it's a really good full book that you can just watch online. Well, read online, I guess. So that about wraps it up. Do you have any other cool solutions that are free, completely free to use that you use in your own games? Leave them in the comments down below. I love to interact with you guys. Apart from that, if you're new here, we're a game development studio making our own game Forge Industry, which will be playable on the Steam Next Fest with a demo and be released shortly after. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to wishlist that game down below in the comments. And apart from that, we also make this kind of game dev related content where we just share some tips and tricks we know. We share some behind the scenes of the Belgian game dev world and how we are doing in it. And we just generally try to entertain you guys and also teach you something. If that's something that you're interested in, be sure to give us a like and also subscribe as it really helps us out and you get this cool content twice a week. That's all I have for this video. So thanks for watching. Bye.